Have you ever been to a zoo and wondered, who owns all these animals? And how did they end up here? Well, in the case of pandas, the answer is pretty simple. China. The People's Republic of China actually owns all but two of the giant pandas living in zoos across the globe today. Some zoos in America alone will pay up to $1 million per year just to keep one panda in one zoo, and will pay an extra $400,000 as a baby tax any time a giant panda is born at the zoo. This unusual practice is known as panda diplomacy, and can actually be traced back quite a while. We first see the act of gift-giving in the form of a panda during the Tang Dynasty, back in 685. As the centuries went on, this unique tradition continued, but didn't actually become known by the name of panda diplomacy until the Cold War, as the guidelines for sending pandas abroad changed. Two dozen pandas were sent to foreign lands as gifts between 1957 through 1983, to the Soviet Union, the United States, the United Kingdom, and the Democratic People's Republic of Korea. But in 1984, pandas would no longer be given as gifts, and would instead be rented out to international zoos, and later given on long-term loans of 10 to 15 years as of 1991. Generally, the way that panda diplomacy works is through the making of deals, where each country comes to an agreement with China to, essentially, rent their pandas for a specified amount of time. After which point, the expiration can either be extended, or the panda can be repatriated to China. Additionally, though, since China does own these adorable creatures, if political ties between the foreign nation and China go sour, the Chinese government can force an end to these loans and bring any panda of their liking home. The actual deals themselves have also often reflected political stances and endeavours. In one instance, China was displeased with Norway when the Nobel Peace Prize Committee bestowed Liu Xiaobo, a Chinese dissident, the award in 2010. Up until this point, Norway had been China's top salmon supplier, and the UK wanted a panda. So what was the logical solution? Form a $4 billion trade deal with Scotland for the export of Scottish salmon and Land Rovers, and send off two pandas, on loan, of course, to the Edinburgh Zoo, as opposed to the more predictable home of the London Zoo. Furthermore, pandas tend to have a drastic and positive impact on the success of the zoos that they inhabit. In Edinburgh, after their pandas arrived, the attendance at the zoo increased by 51% in 2012. The sale of food and merchandise at the Washington DC National Zoo doubled to a whopping $10.3 million in the year after they got their pandas. There is something about these adorable creatures that attract people all over the world, and the Chinese government is fully aware. This means that once a deal has been made between China and a foreign zoo, hoping to spike their revenue with a panda attraction, it becomes easier for the Chinese government to use the animals as bargaining tools for future extensions of the deal. Need something from another nation? Give them a panda! And an ultimatum. Still, there are two pandas over in Mexico that were born in captivity before the Chinese loan policies were altered to make all offspring of Chinese-owned pandas born abroad also the property of China. So yes, technically, not all pandas in zoos around the world are owned by China. But it is all but two. And those two only exist thanks to a Chinese panda couple given to Mexico all the way back in 1975.